Hey guys and welcome back to yet another Professor Oaks challenge. After playing through Fire Ash and Space World Gold during last year, I decided to give a more exotic game in my collection a try. Maybe some of you know already that I own a little bit of a bootleg collection from the early 2000s, including a hard copy of Vietnamese Crystal and Pokemon Green. And yes, I'm aware that Green was a real Gen 1 game in Japan at the time. Green never released here in the West, yet somehow I got my hands on this cartridge during my trip to Spain in 2001. So this is just a regular Japanese green version? I can tell you, it's even better. Thanks to a special little machine I used previously to transfer save data to my Yoshi Ramu cartridge, I got a copy of the ROM to my computer, to make it easier to record and to have save points if this game decided to crash. And oh boy, it did crash. But more on that later. But before we jump right into the game, as it's tradition, what is the Professor Oak challenge? First, you have to catch and evolve all Pokemon possible, before obtaining the next gym badge. This means that you have to evolve your starter and other Pokemon fully before facing Brock. While doing so, only one game is allowed. And also, I'm not allowed to use glitches or exploits. And yeah, I know what you're saying. This whole game is basically a glitch. And you're right, but we still won't use any of them for our advantage. If you want to learn more about the challenge, or even want to try it out for yourself, I can warmly recommend you the ever-growing Professor Oaks Challenge Reddit, and the Discord of course, links in the description. With that out of the way, let's get started. Professor Oak, I mean Dr. Outsider, or Dr. Pat, welcomes us to the world of Pat, and tells us a bit of the backstory. At least I think he does. I tell him my name, and of course, since it's closer to the Japanese version, I only have 5 characters to choose. And a 6 character name. All of it is, I guess. I couldn't help myself and gave my rival the most suiting name I could have thought of, and started my adventure. I already love this. Anyways, I wake up in Bizarro Pellet Town and made my way to the High Grass, where Outsider interrupts us. We are taken back to his lab and allowed to make our first choice of this challenge. As you may know at this point, our starter Pokemon will be Bulbasaur, since it evolves the earliest, and even the difference between level 32 and 36 can make hours of a difference when grinding in the early sections. So even if Oak himself questions us if we really want to take Bulbar, um, Incon, we do exactly that and have our first Pokemon registered. After defeating our rival and his shadow, we make our way to Route 1 and Viridian City, picking up our child's parcel and bringing it back to his lab, to receive the Pokedex. I bought some Pokeballs in Viridian City and captured Bobo and Kella. Over at Route 22 I captured Nida female and male and Machi, before moving on to Viridian Forest. While in the area I captured Cadab, Teach, Talon, Bigak and Beetle, before exiting north to Pewter City. Here we have our first roadblock of this section, and as you may know, this annoying NPC won't let us pass until we have defeated Takshi. Knowing that, we have to evolve all Pokemon we got so far, with the first sections being one of the more tedious parts, because, well, Viridian Forest kinda s for leveling Pokemon. At least it's not scaled leveling, as we have in later games. Anyways, Incon evolved at level 16 into Fushi and Fushi into Flower, which took about 9 hours. Man, those sprites are really something else. Bobo evolved into Bicho and Bigte after hitting level 36, which took an additional 13 hours. Gotta love evolving the Pidgey line in the first section, am I right? Machi was pretty easy and after grinding in Viridian Forest, it eventually evolved into Drill at level 20. Nida Female evolved at level 16 into Linear, and because I don't have any Moonstones yet, that's all we can get for now. The same applies to Nida Male, which also evolved at level 16 into Linen. Switch Training Talon eventually resulted in it evolving into Natur, and doing the same to Teach made it evolve into Vangu. Kella was also no problem at all, thanks to its ok stats, and so at level 20 it evolved, or having evoluted into Larty. 
With 21 Pokemon registered in the decks, we have all Pokemon for the section available. And after 31 hours and 38 minutes, I can finally take on Takshi, earning my first badge, the Grey Badge. With him defeated, the NPC finally lets us pass. And so we make our way onto Route 3. On Route 3, I took on the trainers, including, of course, our most beloved Shorts guy, and used the opportunity to catch Puddy and buy Magikarp over at the Mount Moon Pokemon Center. Sorry, I meant to say Carps. Over at Mount Moon, I captured a stone, literally, and a Papa, before picking up my first Moonstone. At the lower levels, I fought a couple of Rocket Grunts and got myself a Wisto and a Peepee. Coincidentally, almost the same name written as in the German version. Also, I got myself a second Hidden Moonstone here. It's important for you to pick up both Moonstones here now, since you cannot come back until later in the game. After fighting the Science Man, I chose the Fossil of Crust and finally left this mountain for good. Over at Route 4, I headed straight for Cerulean City, but stopped to get a desert first. I used my first Moonstone to evolve Linen into Delon, and my second Moonstone on Linnea to evolve her into Queen. A bit later, I decided to head to Nugget Bridge when my rival initiated the battle. Of course we kick his butt and fight through the various trainers afterwards, before we receive the gold ball. Well, a nugget afterwards. Here on Route 24 there's a couple of more Pokemon for us to catch, including Stami and Ketchy, which I caught too of for an upcoming trade. On Route 25 we fight our way through various trainers to get to Bill's place. Interesting fella as usual. But of course, even in this bizarre universe, we are the good guys and agree to help him. For doing so, we get rewarded the boat ticket. All the way back in Cerulean City, we can now also progress with our journey, skipping Misty's gym for now and taking on the rocket grunt. After doing so, we are now able to go to Route 5. Here I caught an Is and took the underground path to reach Route 6 and Vermilion City. In the city, I got myself the old rod, well, bad fishing rod, which is refreshingly true, and went to the NPC trading Spiro for Farfetch'd to do the in-game trade. After the trade is done, I... the game crashed. Well, I think I expected a bit too much from it, coming this far already. Luckily for me, I saved frequently and stayed as far away from this house as possible afterwards. Over at the Pokemon fan club, I got myself the exchange ticket for the bicycle after listening to the president's weird story. After that, I moved to Route 11 to catch a Sylph. Right into Diglett's cave, I caught a Digood and trained here a bit. When my carps evolved into... Kala. <laughs> I mean, no offense here, but it kinda does look like Kala, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, staying here a bit longer, of course, I also caught myself a Pipple. Out of the Diglett cave, I tried to trade Catchy for a table, but well, this again resulted in a crash. So, looks like the in-game trades are off the table. <laughs> Get it? Because Mr. Mime is called Table. I... I show myself out. For now, I returned back to Vermilion City and took the SSN and her trainers as a great opportunity for a bit of money and experience. And doing so, I evolved my stone into Gallon at level 25. I crushed my rival on the ship had a bit of a weird time with the captain showing me his sword skill and returned back to Diglett's cave, because it's the best training spot for the section. At level 24, Wisto evolved into each, Papon into Gaulu at level 22, and since this is Gen 1, this means no Crobat, fortunately. Kaji evolved pretty early at level 16 into Yugel, and no trade means no Alakazam. Silip into Slip at level 26, Niz into Persi, almost got it right here, at level 28, Dezer into Sen W at level 22, Stame into Ball, and since we don't have access to any more evolution stones yet, that's all we can get out of that line. And so, with 45 Pokemon registered, unfortunately without the two in-game traits, we can take on the next gym, which is Misty, or rather Karsmi, to get access to Cut or sword skill. Man, this game's translation is melting my brain. Anyway, after we defeat Karsmi, 
earning ourselves the blue badge, we can access a lot more areas. This is also where Kanto really opens up, so stay tuned for the next section. I return back to Vermilion, but not to take on Search, because his badge won't give us anything for now, but rather to cross Diglett's tunnel another time. You see, at the other side of the tunnel, there's now one of Oak's assistants, giving us the HM for Flash, if we collected more than 10 Pokemon. Because we did, we got ourselves Secret Lightning Lamb. Well, I don't complain. A bit more south, over at the hidden section of Route 2, I grabbed myself another Moonstone and used it immediately to evolve PP into Bix, and picked up the Secret Ember from the scientist over at the museum. Also, this is a great opportunity now to thank Mulex for his guides on the Professor Oak Challenge. He has done one for I think every mainline Pokemon out there and they are really a lifesaver. If you want to do one of the challenges on your own, you can find Mulex's guides over at the reddit. I returned all the way back to Cerulean City and got myself a bike here, and finally made my way over to Route 9. Here I got a maybe and entered Rock Tunnel. Thanks to the secret lightning lamp, it was really easy to navigate through, and doing so I also caught Yiva and Vanley before exiting the tunnel and entering Lavender Town. For now there's nothing really for us to do here, so I went over to Route 8 and caught Adver here. Since we can still not enter Saffron City, we are taking the underground path once more to reach Route 7 and eventually Saladin City. There are a lot of things for us to do here, so we start by picking up the free Yeep over at the top of one of the skyscrapers. At the restaurant I picked up the coin box, which we will put to good use very soon for some gambling. You see, we need one specific Pokemon here, which we can only buy for coins, Porygon. And we need a lot of coins, 6500 should be specific. And fortunately less than a 9999 you would need a red version. And with 50 coins costing 1000 Poké Dollars, we need around 130,000 Poké Dollars in total which means either a lot of gambling or fighting every single trainer and selling every item. And being the gambler I am, I try to do it the real way. That's when I realized the game crashes once you hit the jackpot. Excuse me for a second. <sighs> All right. On to plan B. I bought a fresh water at the department store, gave it to the saffron guard, to not forget later, and returned back to the Saladon game corner. Spoiler alert, it's actually one of Team Rocket's bases, and so I used that opportunity to grind some of the Pokemon and hopefully get some money in the process. I made my way through the puzzles, picked up another Moonstone, and was fighting every grunt I can, and right when my Voltorb was about to evolve, this happened. <laughs> so, as you can see, this game is a little bit like walking through a minefield. One never knows when it will crash. So from this point I was extremely paranoid and saved after every single trainer I fought. There was a couple of trainers along the way which made the game crash, so doing that was absolutely necessary. Anyways, I avoided that grunt and evolved maybe into Malum at level 30. That one moonstone I found earlier, I used to evolve Putty into Bulky, and that's all the moonstone Pokemon out of the way. Back in the game corner hideout, I picked up the key of Lift <laughs> after defeating a grunt and defeated Giovanni, head of Team Rocket, for the first time. Or well, Sakachi. And for that, I got the Silscope. I still didn't have enough money, so I made my way to Saffron City and took on the dojo there. Defeating all trainers not only gave me a bunch of experience and money, but also I could pick up a prize Pokemon. I decided to go for Shrim. Am I the only one seeing a dodo in his sprite? Well, for now most of the city is off limits, until we took care of the rockets in Lavender Town, and so that's where we are headed next. Inside of Pokemon Tower I took on my rival and fought my way through the floors of the building, catching a literal ghost in the process. And another one. Along with a haha, 
Wow. Considering Cubon's backstory, <laughs> that's pretty rude. Also, I discovered that you cannot read Pokedex entries anymore after you caught a Pokemon. This game barely holds together. <laughs> Anyways, fighting through the floors, Wanli evolved into Gulick, and because no trades allowed, that's all we can get out of him. Before we reach the top floor, we use the Sylph scope to get past the ghost guarding the ladder, and... Well, this is awkward. At the top we defeated a bunch of rocket grunts and saved Fuji, to return back to his house in Lavender Town. Also we get the poker flute, so we can get rid of some roadblocks. Because I still didn't have money for Porygon, I decided to do the whole Sylph Corp plot, to battle some more grunts and hopefully not crash the game in the process. And of course, one of the scientists did. But navigating around him made this part of the story still not that bad. I used the opportunity to evolve Haha -Ha into Haha. -Ha. And because I didn't have any more Pokemon to train and didn't want to waste the experience, I went to Route 16 and got myself a Kako. Back at the Sylphco, I ran into my rival yet another time and got a Labla as a gift trying to save the company. Which is Lapras, by the way. At least, there's another Giovanni fight for us, which went about as you could expect it. Everything returns to normal and the president of the company gives me the omnipotent ball, the master ball, for my effort. After that battle, I finally had enough money for Porygon and so I did buy Pollock, with 6500 game coins in the end. Staying in Celadon, I also used the opportunity to buy a few more evolution stones. And doing so, I managed to evolve Bikak into White, Yeep into Sandra, because I like Jolteon, and Jolteon is the best out of the early evolutions, fight me, Ball into Bottle, and Adver into Exor. With the majority of the evolutions out of the way, one may think I will take on the next gym now, but that's not the case. You see, because we got the Poker Flute earlier, we can now get rid of the Roadblock Snorlaxes, catching one Carby in the process. And with that, our way to Cycling Road is free. I made my way to Fuchsia City over the Cycling Road and grabbed a good fishing rod in the process. Also, I spoke with the Warden, which, despite not having his teeth, doesn't sound that off in the translation. It's Safari Zone time. And honestly, this would be a million times more enjoyable if Gen 1 didn't have a system in place where your Pokeball could literally miss its target entirely. <sighs> Anyways, since we have to come here more often, I decided to go get the gold teeth and the HM here first. On my first try, I even managed to catch a Sifo and an Over, which was nice. I found the NPC in the last zone and got gifted the HM Surf for our efforts, which we cannot use yet, but it's still nice to have. Also, we grabbed the gold teeth and traded for HM4 Strength at the Warden's house. I returned several times to the Safari Zone and got myself Reason, Kahlo, Lula, Morph, Good, and Huff. This took forever. <laughs> Chansey in particular. Anyways, we are still not over with acquiring new Pokemon, which is insane. And so we make our way out of Future City onto routes 12, 13, 14, and 15 catching Ditto, which is called Trape, in the process. I got rid of the second roadblock Kabi and acquired the best fishing rod in the game. And you guessed it, this will allow us to get our hands on even some more Pokemon. Using the good rod and the super rod, I caught Bag, Club, Soft and Moon in Vermilion City, Kedda on Route 24, Yadon over at Route 9, Jelly over at Viridian City, and on Route 19 we fish for Clerk and Touch. And over at the Safari Zone we use the Fishing Rod one more time to get our hands on Drago. As you know, Dratini is the nightmare of anyone doing the Professor Oaks challenge, since it evolves at level 55, or level 50 if you are Cheetah Lance. Before I'm training Drago though, I had a couple of more Evolution Stone Pokemon to get out of the way. And so, using Water and Leaf Stones, I evolved over into Naxi, Clark into Sarmi, almost, <laughs> and back into Perp. Because I tried to avoid lots of the trainers earlier when reaching Future City, I used the majority of them and evolved Drago into Vidra, Vidra, I don't know, at level 30, and managed to evolve Vudra into Order afterwards. Man, those names. 
This took me about 10 hours of grinding. Sifo evolved into Saturn at level 42, Tarch into Seedru at level 32, Jelly into Aness, Yadon into Yadder at level 37, Club into Cobra, Soft into a Soft G, and using another Waterstone into Soft M, Moon into North at level 33, and finally Kedar into Gaulu. Well, since we have two more in-game traits here, I tried to give them another shot. But yeah, see for yourself. Alright, excluding the in-game traits, we have 101 Pokemon registered, which is a lot for only having two badges at this point. But sadly, to continue now, we need to get some more badges, so the HMs will work. And after 107 hours, I took on Koga first, or rather, Chiyao. Because with his badge, we can get access to Surf. And so, after getting the pink badge, we make our way to Route 9 again. Surfing here allows us to reach the power plant, catching Circle, Coil and Thund, making it our first legendary. We also now have access to the Seafoam Islands by surfing south of Future City. And while Articuno is still off limits for now, we can get our hands on a bark. Surfing south of Pallet Town allows us to get to Cinnabar Island. But before we go there, we catch a bangle over at Route 21. Over at Cinnabar Island, I revived my two fossils into Surrey and Poffy. Luckily both at level 30, and enter Pokemon Mansion. Here I got a stick, a bigger stick, Squirr, Poizo, Dejas, Baba, and more importantly, the key to get into the Cinnabar Gym later. As you can imagine, the Pokemon here were already pretty high leveled, so it didn't took very long to evolve the rest of the Pokemon we got in this section now. And so, after a little while, Bark evolved into Butte at level 34, Squirr into Galap, and Sir into Kabut at level 40. And that's it for this section. From now on it's almost all about getting the badges we missed out earlier. And saying so, my next badge is Erika's, or rather, Alec. Defeating her earned me not only her badge, but also the ability to use strength out of battle. And doing so, we move all the way back to Seafoam Islands, to get our hands on the next legendary bird. And after solving the puzzle and lots of Ultra Balls, by the way they are called Superman Balls, I let this uncommented, we got ourselves Freeze. So what Pokemon are still left at this point? Actually two, Moltres and Mewtwo. But in order to get Moltres we must get access to Victory Road, which unfortunately needs all remaining gym badges. So I took on Marchi's gym, Najimi's, I hate that gym to this day, and Kachilo. But wait, there's one more gym badge we must get first. All the way back in Viridian City, the last gym opened, and so we meet again with Sakachi. As you can guess, he was no match with a level 59 order. Now we have finally access to Victory Road, and make our way there, getting our badges checked along the way. Inside of Victory Road, there is yet another small boulder puzzle. But after solving it, we can finally get our last legendary bird. It being, well, fire. So let's take on the Elite Four, claim our title as champion and get Mewtwo, shall we? I mean it's pretty easy, first we defeat Kanar, then Shibar, uh oh, oh no, oh, come on really? I've come so far and Bruno is one of the trainers that crashes the game. The sad reality is, this is the end of the Professor Oaks challenge here. I need to get past Bruno to become the champion, and without becoming champion, Cerulean Cave won't open up, so we don't get Mewtwo. At least we got 119 Pokemon out of the 124 usually available, which is nice. But that ending felt a little bit anticlimactic to me. 
since I'm not allowed to use glitches, the regular Professor Oak's challenge ends here. But I still want to get Mewtwo. And because Gen 1 is a bug fest, I tried to get past Bruno first, but that didn't work. Then I tried to use the walkthrough walls glitch with the Safari Zone and while it should have worked in theory, it didn't. I mean, I was able to activate the glitch, but for some reason it locked my movement, so I wasn't able to get past the guard in Cerulean City. And so I dug up a little bit more and actually found an interesting video by Chikasaurus GL. Please check her channel out if you like glitches in the Pokemon games. It's a goldmine. Anyways, using something called the Select Glitch, which seems to be exclusive to the Japanese games, which this bootleg is basically built upon, I was able to pull this one off. If you are more interested in how it works, give her video a watch, it's really interesting. Anyways, I was able to pull it off after some trial and error and was able to get into Cerulean Cave. All I needed to do now was to get to Mewtwo and use the Omnipotent Ball on it. I forgot how frustrating this dungeon was. But in the end, I did finally challenge Mewtwo, I mean Misu. And using the Omnipotent Ball, I can finally end this video and sleeping peacefully, knowing that Mewtwo didn't got away. <laughs> well, I hope you liked my take on this very exotic Professor Oak's challenge. Also, thank you guys so much for a thousand subscribers. You guys are the best. I love to make those videos and I hope that you as equally like to watch them. Have a good time and until the next video. See ya!